Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic will be a continuation of uh, complex numbers. We were talking about certain formal way uh, to introduce uh, complex numbers, and uh, right now I think that basically has covered more or less the um, more rigorous definition of the um, complex numbers. I would like to concentrate on their graphical representation now. Um, we all know that uh, real numbers can be graphically represented on a straight line with one particular point on that line marked as equivalent um, to the number zero, then there is a positive direction on the line, and with a certain segment of a unit length, we can just put all these marks, one, two, three, minus one, minus two, etc., to represent inter integer numbers. Then we can divide each uh, into certain fractions to, to, to represent fractions and uh, rational numbers, and fill it up in between with irrational numbers to complete the whole line of uh, representation of real numbers. Now let's talk about complex numbers and how they can be represented. Well, um, complex number, generally speaking, is basically a combination of uh, two real numbers and uh, uh, the uh, imaginary number i, square of which is minus one, um, and that's the general representation. And right right now, I will not use uh, the formal representation with the curly brackets around these operations because these are actually true operations within the set of uh, complex numbers, where a as a complex number by itself is actually formally represented as actually this is also curly as a combination of a um, plus zero as far as the imaginary part is so b is equivalently uh, represented in the complex number uh, numbers so I will be talking only about real operations of addition and multiplication and when I'm saying that the imaginary number is multiplied by real, that's not exactly true. Imaginary number in this case is multiplied by a, a complex number uh, which is mapped into a uh, real number b. But these are parts of this uh, more formal definition, so right now let's just abstract from it. Real addition between real numbers and imaginary number i, so how can we represent this particular um, complex number graphically. Well, in theory, I could choose a, another representation of this um, complex number. I can choose something like a comma b, thinking that a represents the real, uh, the real number um, which is on the left, and b is the real number which is supposed to be multiplied by, uh, by imaginary part. This is another way to formally introduce um, complex numbers, and I can add these two numbers together, uh, I can multiply them, etc. So I can basically repeat everything, except I'm not using these operations, which I think I might actually find this convenient. But in this case, this is uh, another representation which can be used as well. But at the same time, this reminds us that um, it's just a pair of real numbers, and the pair of real numbers can be represented as a point on the plane with the Cartesian coordinates. So I will draw another line here. And I can always represent this pair of uh, two real numbers or, if you wish, this complex number as a point on the plane where its x-coordinate abscissa is a and ordinate is b, the y-coordinate. Okay, so, 
since a and b can be any real numbers, then all complex numbers basically fill out an entire plane, because the x-coordinate and y-coordinate can be any real number. So basically, all the points um, on the plane are filled out with um, representations of complex numbers. All right, fine. And um, now, um, certain very elementary properties of, uh, of this type of representation. Now, obviously, we can always think about this particular um, segment, which connects our real, our complex number with uh, zero. Now, obviously, it has a length. It's a segment, and it's a um, rectangle. It's a rectangular. Uh, sorry, it's a, it's a triangle. <laughs> it's a straight tri triangle with a with a straight angle. So basically, the Pythagorean theorem can help us. Now, this is a, and this is b. So basically, this length, uh, let's call it c. This c is obviously the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's one thing which we can say about our um, uh, complex number. So its representation is on a distance of this distance from 0. But at the same time, let me um, make another um, couple of observations in this particular case. Um, what if I would like to know the distance between two different points on the plane that represent complex numbers? Well, um, obviously we can use something like this, theorem, uh, Pythagorean theorem, and what's interesting about this is that for any complex number like this, um, we can always um, talk about something which is called its modulo. Now, the modulo in this case, by definition, is exactly this, square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, what's interesting is that this modulo which can be defined purely algebraically, is actually the same as in the geometrical, in the graphical representation of um, complex numbers, is really a, a distance from zero to our number. Now, a very similar thing can be observed if I will take a distance between two different points. For instance, what's the difference between this and this? Now, geometrically, this is b, right? Now, let's approach this particular um, uh, this particular geometrical representation from uh, the algebra of complex numbers viewpoint. If this representation of a plus bi, what is this particular point on the plane a representation of? Well, obviously, its x-coordinate is a, and its y-coordinate is 0, right? So we have this point, which is represented here, and we have this point which is represented here, we know that the distance between these two points, geometrical distance, is actually b. But let's see what happens if I will use algebra of complex numbers. First, I will just subtract. From this number, I will subtract this number. What happens? From a plus bi, I subtract a plus 0i. What happens? Well, as you remember, real parts are subtracted and a minus a gives zero. And um, imaginary parts are also subtracted separately. b minus, this will be bi. Or if you wish, to be more precise, zero plus bi. 
What's the module of this? Well, it's obviously the same thing, square root of 0 squared plus b squared, which is b, if b is a positive number. Let's say b is a positive and a is a positive. Example on this particular picture. So as you see, modulo represents the same number in this case. Modulo is the difference between these two numbers represents the same as geometrical distance between between these two points. Generally speaking, this is a situation which, which is exactly the same for any two points. So modulo in uh, algebraic res representation of uh, complex numbers plays exactly the same role as um, the distance uh, in their geometrical and their graphical representation. So um, if you will take another point, let's say here, and call it C plus DI, now what happens? Well, if you would like to know this distance, what you would probably do is you will build this triangle with the right angle, this. Now this is C, and this is D, right? Since this is C plus DE, the projection onto the x-axis is C, and on the y-axis is, is, is D. So what is the length of this? Well, again, we will use uh, the uh, Pythagorean theorem, and this um, segment is the difference between B and D. This segment is the difference between C and A, C and A. So we have uh, C minus A square plus g minus b square square root. But again, this distance, which is equal to this number, can be obtained obtained by just different uh, but, but by, by calculating the difference between these two complex numbers. So if you will do a plus b i minus c plus g i. Now, what's the difference will be? Well, obviously, it's a minus c as a real part, b minus d as a uh, imaginary part. So, so that's the difference. And what's the module of this difference? Well, again, it's square of this plus square of this, which is this. So. The point is that geometry of uh, the complex, the representation of complex numbers, is very much resembles just algebraic uh, operations on the complex numbers, with a very important quality that the distance between two representa graphical representations of complex numbers is basically a module of their algebraic difference. Okay, that's one um, kind of side issue which I wanted to make with complex numbers. They can be graphically represented. Um, what's uh, interesting is that you can always represent a point on the plane um, using some other system of coordinates, not, not necessarily uh, Cartesian coordinates, but you can also use um, uh, polar coordinates, and every point can be represented by the distance from the zero, from, from the origin of coordinates, and this angle. So, two parameters, r, which is a distance, and alpha, which is an angle, always define our point um, on the plane. So I can always say that um, my complex numbers 
can be represented on the plane using this Cartesian coordinate system where A and B represent their um, uh, correspondingly uh, real and, uh, and, demonic, and, and imaginary part. At the same time, I can say it can be represented by uh, a pair of uh, uh, distance to the zero and the angle from x axis, which I have to lift that particular uh, segment to get to my point. Now, if represented in this way, for those who know some basic trigonometry, it's obviously that um, a coordinate of this thing is equal to um, r times cosine of alpha, if alpha is this angle, right? So this is a, this is r, and this is b. And b is correspondingly r times sine of alpha. Now, if um, you compare this with uh, our algebraic representation of the number a plus bi, what we can always say that this representation can be obtained the following way. So what is the difference between these two? What is the length between these two points? So r. r is actually a modular, right? So we can always have it as modular, a squared plus b squared, multiplied by a divided by this square root plus b divided by this square root i. That's the same thing, right? I just multiplied by the module and divided by module. Now, this is r. So, if a is equal to r times cosine alpha, then this, a divided by this square root of a square plus b square, is the cosine of alpha. And correspondingly, b divided by the same thing. This is the sine of alpha. So that's how many different aspects, geometry, trigonometry, and algebra are brought together in the same um, kind of uh, very harmonious way. Because one complements another, and no matter from which side you're approaching this problem, you actually get more or less the same thing. So it proves uh, that you are on the right way, basically. If you can uh, prove the theorem, for instance, in three different ways, you're absolutely sure that you have proved it correctly. So this is three different ways to approach um, the uh, representation of complex numbers. A trigonometrical way, um, Cartesian coordinate way, and algebraic way, and all lead to the same thing. Um, well, that was just a, a, a small extra for graphical representation of uh, complex numbers. Um, there will be a couple of problems as well, which I would definitely recommend you to solve. Thank you. That's it for today.